Welcome to the armor of God. You guys all doing well? Or what? Responded by the devil, born already ruined. Stone cold dead as I stepped out of the womb. By his grace I have been touched. By his word I have been healed. By his hand I've been delivered. By his spirit I've been sealed. I am saved. By the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I've been saved. By the blood of the Lamb. I am saved. Oh, save. And I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm so glad. And I'm so glad. I just want to thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. By his truth, I can live upright. By his strength, I do endure. By his power, I've been lifted. In his love I am secure, though he bought me with a price, freed me from the pit, full of emptiness and wrath, and the fire that burned within, I've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. Hey, I've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. Saved. So glad, I'm so glad, so glad. I wanna thank you, Lord. I wanna thank you, Lord. I wanna thank you, Lord. Now tell me if any of you felt like this. No one to rescue me. Nobody would dare. I'm going down for the last time, but by his mercy I've been spared. Not by words, by faith in him who called. For so long I've been hindered, for so long I was stalled. Now I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. Saved by the blood of the Lamb. Saved. Safe. And I'm so glad, so glad, so glad. I just wanna thank you, Lord. I 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 wanna thank you, Lord. How many of you guys out there are safe? Come on. Come on, if I'm not getting a response, then half of you need some salvation. And we know it's not by works. It's by faith in him. That's all. Okay, so by request, I am doing this song again. Um, it's one I've done. I've done at the men's group. I've done at Pat. I've done in the classes before. I'm getting tired of no, 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 no. It's all good. Um, it's funny because it's one of those songs where, like, you know, people will have said, like, you know, I really like the old hymn Amazing Grace. Okay, good. And then you get the people who like Amazing Grace, my chains are gone. Good. And then I brought this one to the table and we've added this to our list of songs that we're doing. And uh, it's Amazing Grace to the song Peaceful, Easy Feeling by the Eagles. So, and then we add the chorus in, and you'll see that it makes more sense, the chorus, with this version, than it actually did with the Eagles song. So. Amazing grace, oh how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, 
but now I am found Was blind, but now I see And I've got a peaceful, easy feeling And I know you won't let me down Cause I'm already standing on solid ground you go and join me with that chorus, though, and you know the verse already. It was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Come on! And I've got a peaceful, easy feeling. And I know you won't let me down Cause I'm already standing on solid ground Through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come Tis grace has brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home Cause I've got a peaceful, easy feeling And I know you won't let me down Cause I'm already standing on solid ground When we've been there ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun We know less days to sing God's praise Than when we first begun And I've got a peaceful, easy feeling And I know you won't let me down Cause I'm already standing solid ground I've got a peaceful easy feeling and I know you won't let me down cause I'm already standing on solid ground How many people have ever been let down by God? Yeah. How many of you guys are standing on his solid ground? Amen. Amen. All right. So, we have a lot to be thankful for. And many of us, many of us can relate to this song. And it's always a rough song for me to sing because it's so, so accurate in my life. Probably accurate in many of our lives. Like all I could see was a struggle Haunted by ghosts that live in my past Bound up in shackles of all of my failures Wondering how long is this gonna last And you look at this prisoner and say to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. Why? Because I am redeemed. You set me free. So I shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain, because I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed Oh, oh, my life I've been called unworthy Named by the voice of my shame and regret 
But when I hear you whisper, child, lift up your head. I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet. No, it's not done. Why? Because I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain, cause I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. Now I don't have to be the old man inside of me, cause his day is long dead and gone. Because I've got a new name, a new life, I'm not the same, a hope. That will carry me home Cause I am redeemed You set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain Cause I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed Amen. If you guys missed prayer night, you missed a great night last night. It was a powerful, powerful night. Um, I'm thrilled with those who were out. Those who missed it, missed it. It was amazing. It was great, you know. Anybody know what it's like to be locked outside of a church? You found out, didn't you? Yeah. There was a purpose. It's because, and we're, we're, people are going to be celebrating soon Yom Kippur, the Day of the Atonement. And the thing is, is we actually were talking about that last night. That back in those days, the Israelites, the Jewish people, were not allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. They did not have access to God. They were stopped by a huge veil. And it took years until Jesus Christ came and died on the cross before that veil would be torn down. It would be ripped on the night of his crucifixion. And then you had access to God. So for us as Christians, his salvation, the salvation that we get through Christ <clears throat> made it so we could have a door. He calls himself the door. And we have access so what we did was we locked the door, and after we talked about the Day of Atonement, we opened up the door because we knew that we could come through the door and start to worship God and pray to God because we have access to God. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees again I'm fighting battles from my knees I'm fighting battles from my knees Helmet of salvation I know who is Lord Shield of faith locks fiery darts away the spirit's sword I'm fighting battles from my knees I'm fighting battles from my knees. Breastplate of righteousness on my chest. Bell of truth and gospel shoes, it's no time to rest. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees. The enemy is watching, knows where we'll go wrong. But the word of God says, when I'm weak, I am strong. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees. Sing with me. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees I'm fighting battles from 
teaching where the Holy Spirit moves through us and calls us to action so that we don't see our walk the same again after we learn about putting on our shoes tonight. And we praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Can you believe it's week four? We're almost halfway through the armor of God. Wow, time flies when you're having fun, eh? Amen. Here we go. It's our memory verse, uh, which we'll have each time. Uh, why don't we all read that together? Everybody see it okay? Everybody hear me okay? Yeah. All right, good, good. All right, ready? Ephesians 6, 10 and 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against all the wiles of the devil. Finally, my brethren. Ephesians 6 chapter, Paul has said a whole lot. Here he's saying, uh, I've said all that to say this. To be strong. See, our own strength. No one serves God in his own strength. Our own strength is inadequate, but God's power is invincible. We must put on, uh, I heard an analogy not long ago where someone said, well, I don't ever take it off. I sleep in it. And I think that's, um, that, that's a wise thing. Amen. We have to trust our God. We have to trust the Word of God. We have to trust our armor. Uh, a couple of verses here. And by the way, uh, uh, I have a list of verses up here that Jeff has, if anybody would like a copy. I won't uh, go around the room and ask for readings. Um, you know, that, that went a little slow last time. But uh, we do have them here if, if you would like them. But uh, Hebrews 4.12, and you don't have to turn there. It's just, it's just fine if you just listen. But Hebrews 4.12 says, The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies those he calls. And uh, it's not your ability God is looking for. It's your availability. God works through an available and a willing vessel. If you want to be saved, you got to be available and willing. You want to be healed. You want to be delivered. You want to be set free. You want miracles to happen. Last night we prayed for some miracles to happen. And between, uh, I was at the men's ministry uh, last Tuesday. And last night, folks, it's praying time. We need some miracles. We have some brothers and sisters who are up under it and who are, who are hurting. But God is able. God is able. We saw in the first century the church had awesome power. And uh, many say the modern day church has no power. If we want the church to have power again, we've got to submit to God again. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He didn't move. We did. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says it this way, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. You have the old King James that says, he will direct thy paths. You notice I can quote that without looking at it because I've had to in my life. You know, uh, uh, yes, I've had to in my life. Okay, the text for the evening, Ephesians 6, 14, or 6, 15 rather. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Feet prepared, shod, not shoddy like shoddy workmanship, but uh, fitted or prepared. Uh, your feet are the foundation on which you stand. Uh, I was preparing this lesson two weeks ago. I had got hit with a horrible gout attack in my left foot. My foot swelled up so bad I could barely get my shoe on. When I got it on, it just hurt. So to somebody in this room I had conversed with and asked, would you pray for me? And they did. Put ice on it, and I was healed. I wasn't totally out of the woods for maybe a couple of days, but just... The idea of feet, you know, feet, that's your foundation on which you stand. If things are not right with your feet, they're not right at all. And what I like to do is just compare that to the foundation of a building. First of all, you even take this building, for example. You don't just go somewhere and just dig a hole and plop a building in. First thing, a lot of tests have to be, soil tests have to be done to make sure that particular plot of ground is, um, is, is, is sufficient for a foundation. Once that's determined, there are a lot of soil tests have to be done, you know, because it could be muddy, shifty, sandy. Those things are not, um, those things not adequate for the, for holding of a foundation. And just like, who are we rooted and grounded in? Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Things that, um, uh, things that make you weak, cotton candy theology, um, uh, Entertainment. I always say I can entertain myself. I need the word. I came here, the word was here. So going back to the foundation of a building, once it's been determined that that soul is adequate for a foundation, uh, then the next thing, remember we're in the state of New Jersey. This is called the garden state, but it should be called the toxic waste dump state. state. Because there's a thing out there called brownfield sites. I remember my former church 13 years ago, we built a new 39,000 square foot building. And because it was determined it was a brownfield site, special testing had to be done. So, a lot, so what you see here right now, I would venture to say more was done before you even saw a building than, than what you see right now behind the scenes. So now once all the soil is determine that it is adequate, the next thing is the digging of a footing. You see, a foundation sits on a footing. Now, a footing is typically about two feet wide, and it has to be below the frost line. So a trench is dug by uh, front end loaders, backhoes, things like that. And uh, that footing is, is form the forms are set, like two little concrete walls on each side of the, uh, uh, of the hole. And then what's called, if anybody's in construction, because I, I figure not many people may be, but they use what's called rebar, a bunch of steel to go in there to tie it all together. You see that footing's got to be tied together. And once you start laying, because most footings are cinder block, some are cast concrete. But um, first, okay, that, that's, that's all going to be tied together with the rebar. Then the concrete trucks can come in and pour the footing. Once that footing is poured, let's say in the case of this building, which I believe is cinder block uh, uh, underneath, but I don't know that for sure, but I believe it is. Now, when you start building walls, you build from the corners. You build corner to corner. Uh, typically, one or two men per corner, a brick mason sets his corner, it makes it um, level, which is straight, I mean level, and plumb, which is straight. And then he takes a measurement. He's got to communicate that measurement to the men on the other corners. It can't even be that far off. Even a sixteenth of an inch off at footing level, by the time you get up here to the roof, a lot of these roofs are uh, like prefab trusses and stuff. It won't fit. See, you and I as believers, we start taking on spiritual junk food, we don't fit. So from the very ground up, that thing is, is, you know, it starts with the soil. Pastor Gary did a um, 
teaching on the different soil types. You know, uh, 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 sandy. And uh, Jesus also talks about um, don't build your house on the sand. Build it on the rock. The strong foundation. And that word foundation shouldn't be strange to you. Our men's ministry here is called the strong foundation men's ministry. The Bible teaches us as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens the countenance of another. So one believer sharpens another. And that's exactly what we do there. And I'm sure the women's ministry do it, the other ministries do it. Any ministry should have Christ first. Amen? But uh, the Roman soldier wore what we would call sandals instead of boots like our modern soldiers. But these were a certain type of very good sandal. Leather straps would hold the thick hardened leather sole of the sandal to the bottom of his feet. This was to protect them from the same sort of things that we encounter when we walk around outside. Roads are hot in the summer and uh, cold in the winter. The terrain might be rough stones, sharp rocks for thorns. A soldier with blistered, cut, or swollen feet would more, be more vulnerable to his enemies. The soldier's shoes were also important to protect him from traps the enemy would set in the ground to disable him. Uh, we have an enemy who has a thousand ways from Sunday to deceive an unstable soul. And, uh, but we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy, amen, when we are in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But he's still going to set traps for us. All traps. You know, those traps, the wiles of the devil. <clears throat> they would sharpen sticks to very sharp points and then fix them in the ground with their tips slightly above the ground level. If an enemy came running along and stepped on these with unprotected feet, his, feet, his foot would be pierced and he'd be completely out of action. In addition to this, this could lead to infection as well. So it's important to have well shod or, or protected feet. As it is here, your footing again is Jesus Christ, the Word of God. But foot protection was not the only reason for the soldier to wear the special sandals. He also needed to have good traction since he might be called to climb a slippery slope or stand firm on slick grass or mud. I heard a message one time, how to stand your ground in these slippery times. That message was oh, about 12 years ago. Anybody agree that times have gotten slipperier in the last 12 years? And they're going to get worse. Yes. Excuse me, Liz says all the time it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets any better. It ain't going to get any better. So Jesus, first of all, takes us up. But we believe in a pre-tribulational rapture. Because, and if uh, you know, everybody quotes First Thessalonians, but I'd like to point you to the book of Revelation and the way it's set up. The first three chapters, the Lord is speaking to the church. The fourth chapter, there's no longer a church. The sixth chapter, the tribulation starts. Goes on until about the 18th. You never hear about the church again until 19 and 20. He comes back with us. Chapter 22 is a description of heaven. Amen. That's revelation for dummies. <laughs> Not calling you dummies, but that's just revelation for dummies. Uh, Paul uses the analogy of the Roman soldier's footwear to tell us about the next piece of armor God has given us so that we can fight the spiritual battle we're in. Marching was an, an essential part of a, of a soldier's life. And no soldier could march far without sturdy shoes. Even before the Roman era, the breaking of a soldier's shoe was a metaphor for weakness or defeat. Um, at Isaiah 5, 27 through 28. Can you all see that or no? You all can see it? All right, then let's, let's read that together. No one will be weary or stumble among them. No one will slumber or sleep, nor will the belt of their loins be loose, nor the strap of their sandals be broken, whose arrows are sharp and their bows are bent. Their horses' hooves will seem like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. There's a lot going on in there. No one who lives wickedly should expect to live easily. Sin weakens the body and the spirit of people. It destroys people. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And that's in red. And that's by who? Who? 
Again. Jesus. One more time. Jesus. Amen. 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 When God comes forth in wrath, the hills tremble. Fear seizes strong men. When God orchestrates the ruin of a provoking people, he can always find instruments to carry out the task. God sent the Babylonians and afterwards the Romans to punish his chosen people for not wanting to hear and obey the voice of God speaking through his prophets. When in disobedience, God's hand will move off and away from us, then the enemy will come in and when we're in that weakened state. That weakened and unprotected state. If God frowns on us, how can anyone smile? Let us seek to be grounded and rooted in obedience and in truth. James 1.22 says it this way, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. I want to turn to something here. Um, you, can, you don't have to turn there, but Deuteronomy 28. It's a lot of reading, so I won't go through all of it. But Deuteronomy 28. Now, Deuteronomy 28 is broken down into two parts. The first 14 verses are blessings for obedience. This is God writing to the Israelites. Verses 15 through 68 are all the curses for disobedience. Now, I'll just read just a little bit of it. Now, it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, and to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, Two says, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. And he goes on to say you're blessed in the marketplace, blessed in the field, blessed in the uh, country, blessed in the city, blessed all over, all over the place. But then in 15, but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice, voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. So, it behooves, although obedience is better than sacrifice, amen, it behooves us to be obedient to our Lord. <coughs> the soldier's shoes were fashioned from thick leather, and studded through with soles of hobnails. Roman soldiers were so closely identified with their shoes that the slang term for Roman soldiers in the ancient world was bootmen. You could say, by their boots you shall know them. But what's said about us? By our fruits you shall know them. By our fruits. The studded soles enabled the soldier to stand firm. They kept the soldier's feet from slipping in battle. Without his shoes, a Roman soldier could not maintain his position against his enemy. Now, shoes, as we said before, related to a building, the foundation. Now, a building is only as strong and as durable as the foundation it sits on and the materials it's made out of. You are only, as a believer, as, as uh, first of all, you're, you're saved being a believer, and as the amount of word that you take in and that you apply. Now, part of that word is Jesus' last command, which is our first concern of Matthew 28. Go. It says, Go ye therefore and all the nations, and make disciples out of all men, teaching them that all things which I have taught you, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That involves us going, as Pastor Steve says, inward teaching for outward reaching. And, and what it comes down to, do what God said. Now it's going to get slick and slippery like in the winter time when you get all this ice. And then I heard a lot of complaints about the heat now. <laughs> when you get all this ice and slipping and sliding, it's that way spiritually too. The Greek word rendered preparation or readiness in Ephesians 16 can also be translated prepared foundation. In other words, a firm basis for a soldier's feet. The good news about Jesus Christ provides a strong foundation needed to stand firm against the powers of darkness. 
The gospel brings peace. Paul's image here pictures the sandals of a Roman soldier as readiness given by the gospel of peace. Shoes made a soldier ready to run into battle. The gospel makes a believer ready for spiritual battle. The gospel anchors our faith in basic truth. Without that, we would find our foundation slipping. One of the modern, one of the, uh, uh, modern world's most common problems is stress. Yet the peace given through the gospel is the answer to most of our daily anxiety. We can First Peter one uh, one five. No, here we go. First Peter five and seven lets us know that we can cast all our cares on God because He cares for us. Further connecting the concept of shoes with the gospel of peace may also just suggest the idea of believers taking the gospel into daily battles, sharing it wherever they go, as we cited before, according to Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Believers are given the gospel of peace in order to be ready for battle and to help others facing spiritual attack. Those who study martial arts know that setting one's feet is the beginning of all combat. They affect balance, grip, power, and movement, in the same way the foundation of our day-to-day -day Christianity is the gospel. Proverbs 10.25 also lets us know, When the whirlwind passes by, the wicked are no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. Proverbs 12.3 lets us know, A man is not established by wickedness, but, by the, root of the, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Now, Wednesday nights here, we're studying Proverbs. We're also studying Proverbs in the uh, men's ministry. Uh, I have a few men here from the men's ministry. And we're up, uh, Mike, I think we're up around chapter 26. Uh, Gary's, uh, Pastor Gary's gaining ground on us. We were boasting about how far ahead we were, but he, he's gaining on us. But anyway, one of the things we're seeing, a common thread in there, I'm seeing a couple things. One is uh, wickedness brings weakness. We look out at our world today and we see like violent crime. We see a lot of things and uh, we use the term like strong man, strong man, strong arm, strong arm robbery. And you know, and those individuals do have strength, but it's being used the wrong way. But um, one of the things we're saying is wickedness brings weakness. Righteousness, of course we know, brings life everlasting. And in that Isaiah 59 I quoted last time I was up here, one of the things I found in studying that text is the Lord looked out there for an advocate and couldn't find one. What he was finding is the ones that weren't wicked were weak. And what I'm finding, I'm preparing, I uh, just finished Proverbs 25 over there. I'm, I'm working on 28 now. I'm seeing a whole lot in there about wickedness, weakness, and how a king's throne is established in righteousness. Colossians 2 7 lets us know, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. First Corinthians 311, uh, let's read that together. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. Peter confessed, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, in Matthew 16, 16. The Father has revealed this wonderful truth to Peter. Jesus even told him, he said, "This you, you do not get this from men, but my Father revealed this to you. The foundation of the church is the rock of salvation. No man can lay any other foundation than the one that had already been laid. The foundation of the church is Jesus Christ our Lord. There are many who believe in error that Jesus was telling Peter he was the foundation. No, no, no. Jesus alone is the foundation of the church. The Lord alone is the underpinning bedrock of our gospel and singular foundation on which we are to build our faith. Jesus is the anchor of our hope and the fundamental truth of the glorious gospel of God. Philippians 2, 9 through 11, I love this text. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I was taught you're going to confess one way or another. You're going to confess here, or you're going to confess down in the dungeon. You might as well do it here. The gospel of peace is the good news that we have peace with God. Before we turn to Jesus, we used to live for ourselves, and we didn't care about God's plans. We were in conflict, but God loves us and made a way of being reconciled with him and living in peace. You see, God, religion is man's way to God. His word is God's way to man. God made a way to reconcile us. Now, God hadn't done anything wrong, had he? Jesus hadn't done anything wrong. He didn't have to leave, you know, he didn't have to leave his throne to come down here about us. But, uh, you know, before, you know before, before we turned to him, we, we wanted to live our own way. We did everything we were big and bad enough to do. And some are still doing it. But uh, uh, there's, a word, uh, uh, there's a word in the Bible about that. Come out from among them, my people. Come out from among them. The word peace has several other uses. The absence of conflict among Christians. The Lord wants believers to live in peace and unity with one another. <clears throat> I've said this before, I'll say it again. You show me conflict, I'll show you spirit involvement. The spirits are many, only one is good, the Holy Spirit. But when you have conflict and strife and stress, that's not godly. And when you, when, when you, when you have that in the church, and, and there's an interesting story to uh, why I'm here now at Calvary Chapel. I was in a strong, strong word church that was good in the teaching, but uh, it got to the point the last probably year I was there, I had a knot in my gut every time I went in. It was like going to a job you don't like. The, in, the stuff behind the scenes, and, and I was, I've seen, and Liz had actually had stopped going. And I would, oh, you know, we need to be in fellowship, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, we, we need to, and we in Hebrews 10.25 does say, don't forsake the assembling ourselves together. And, you know, that's how we, we sharpen one another, and that's how we grow stronger. So, you know, it hit me that uh, she had been listening to Calvary Chapel podcasts for many months, and I had been listening to them too, and we were both looking at each other, this is what we need. So I dealt with Joshua Tree for years, for probably 15, 16 years. So they told me they moved out here. I finally found the place, I Calvary Chapel. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Long story. Long story made short. Here I am. The absence of worry. This piece is confidence that God has everything under control. Liz says it all the time. God has got this. Yeah, you get all riled up about the political scene in this country. You get all riled up about other things going on. God has got this. Nothing has taken him by surprise. God has got this. And in the end, who wins? We do. We do. In the end, we win. And always remember Matthew 6, 31 through 34 says it this way. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what, what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. And here it is. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. 34 says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You could say that another way. It's all I can do to get through today. Anybody ever feel that way? 
It's all I can do to get through today. But once again, God has got this. Everybody can read that? Read uh, 1 Thessalonians first. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, be at peace among yourselves. Christian ministers and leaders who preach the whole truth and labor and word and doctrine are entitled to more than respect. God calls for them to be esteemed abundantly and super abundantly. This is to be done in love. Now, I want to tell you how to be blessed. Anybody want to know how to be blessed? Show the pastor respect. Show the pastor respect. And we have a, past, a couple of pastors here, Pastor Chuck Miller, Pastor Steve Hampel. You know, give them that respect as, uh, as leaders in God's house. Um, we got to know Gary and Val very early on and, and being here about maybe six months ago, uh, we went out to dinner with Gary and Val. Guess who paid? Anytime, it's, it's another one. Anytime you take the pastor out, pay. Okay? Enough said there. Uh, uh, but uh, he'll like to hear that, by the way. Uh, John 13:35. Uh, let's read that together. Ready? By this, all will know that you are my, my disciples, if you have love for one another. Where were we first called Christians? At Antioch. Why? Because of our love for one another. See the world sees it. The world sees something different. They should see something different in us when they see us, and then they see that even in bad circumstances, like um, I, you know, people who I know and Liz, Liz and I have known have seen bad things happen to us. I mean, I got to let you know we are blessed. We are blessed. But um, you know, in the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, because he has overcome the world. But see, and and, and, and there's an important thing, a little important lesson in there is uh, there's a difference between them seeing you being a nice guy or a nice girl versus the, versus the Holy Spirit at work in you. So it's important to witness. And, you know, um, I'm a firm believer. If you feel good about something, you have no problem sharing it. So, uh, you know, you feel good about your walk in the Lord. I mean, by all means, please share it. One of the things I love about this church is it's a teaching church and it's a loving church. Uh, and I came, we, we've been here about it, look, just over a year and we were shown nothing but love from, from the beginning to end, from that day to this day. And we reciprocate that because I consider it an honor to be in God's house. Not a, not a, I mean, a privilege, not necessarily a right, a privilege. Although he did say come boldly to the throne of grace. But uh, a word that's lost in the church nowadays called reverence. Reverence. And like I said, as far as uh, when I made that talk about the pastor, and I've noticed this. I've been saved 20 years, and it's not isolated to any one place. But I just, even my old church, there were people who loved the pastor and treated him well, and there were those who didn't. I've heard stories here about people who disrespect the pastor and, 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 and at, different, at, different, at different churches. And, you know, that's the enemy. And see, and it's important to recognize the enemy. Because, uh, uh, there's, anybody know in Galatians 5, the fruits of the Spirit and the works of the flesh. Okay? Uh, and, and, and elsewhere in the Bible says, now by these three, th these three things, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. When I, you can understand all prophecies, all the mysteries. If you don't have love, you got nothing. You can speak in tongues, interpret tongues. You can be all that in a steak dinner. If you don't have love, it, it's profit you nothing. Now let's read Ephesians 2, 13 and 14. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. The middle wall of separation. Now, uh, I see a handful of you here at prayer last night. Uh, Pastor Steve did something. I was a little confused in the beginning, too. But the door was shut and it had a, a seal on it. 
We couldn't, we couldn't enter in. One of the things I took away, I took from that, and he went through how uh, the, the, the curtain and the Holy of Holies, that was the most holy place, only the high priest could go in there, he'd go in there once a year. If he went in there and he was unclean, and, uh, uh, and he would fall dead, they couldn't go in there and get him out. I had, read, I had heard or read where he had a, a rope where they would pull him out. Because they could not go in there and they could not touch the Ark of the Covenant. What is that saying to us? Well, that's, that's not legalism. God has order. God has order. What a difference Jesus made. Remember the statement of the blind man to the Pharisees when they said to him, you give God the praise? That was a sarcastic question. We know that man is a sinner. But the blind man went on to say whether or not he's a sinner, I do not know. But this one thing I know, I was blind, now I see. Found in John 9, 25, Romans 14 and 19. It reads, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. If it doesn't edify, if it doesn't encourage, if it doesn't lift up, don't bring it. If it's not right, don't, don't, don't do it. If it's not true, don't say it. In 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. Here we go. Now let's read that together, if we will. And in all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Has the pastor been teaching about reconciliation, being reconciled, uh, uh, being reconciled, forgiven? Having given Jesus Christ to die for sinners, we now have access to God. It is only through the grace and spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ that the proud, fierce, and diabolic nature of sinful man can be changed and reconciled to God. A 12 step program is good, as, uh, but you brothers over there know that the, that the Lord is who does the delivering. The Lord heals, the Lord takes drugs and alcohol away from you, the Lord takes greed away from you, hatred. I used to, before I was saved, I didn't like people. I don't like people. I just didn't. God taught me to love people. I was impatient. I was selfish. Now I'll, I'll, I'll give you anything I have. That's the Lord. That, that's the Lord. The wickedness in the heart of men and women is something only the blood of Jesus can remove. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Let's read that together. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God which passes all understanding. When you should be going crazy, you're rejoicing. You're giving God the praise. Not You're not, well, thank you, God, for getting me in the car accident. No, 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 no. No, thank you, God, for being who he is. For, 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 for being there. No matter what we go through, he's there. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. Take it to God in prayer. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Let me say that again. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. And we're going to do some of that. But tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. That you will experience God's peace, which passes all understanding. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Him. Has anybody experienced that? Can I see your hands, please? I got two hands and a foot raised. The peace of God which passes all understanding. 
But, you know, uh, the starting point of that is not just knowing the word. It's nice to know the word, be able to quote the word. But we are told be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word, deceiving ourselves, found in James 1 and 22. Uh, the way we start makes all the difference. Matthew 6.33 reminds us, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you as well. You see, we in the world, we need, some of, we need a lot of the same things. I know somebody who I see every day that they don't really plan everything, they just react to everything. And that's not a good plan. We were talking in the men's ministry about uh, somebody was asking the question about, well, should I uh, save for retirement? Is that like not trusting God? No, well, first of all, we are to be wise stewards. You know, uh, we are to be ready, you know, because rap when can the rapture happen? Yeah. Any moment. There's no other prophetic signs that need to be fulfilled for the rapture to happen. We are to be ready, but we are also to plan as if we're going to be here for a long time. I, I, I heard of a story um, years ago about some people who were expecting God to take them up and they just didn't do anything. I'm not talking about the whole camping incident where doomsday was going to be, what day, I don't know, it's Tuesday or whatever. But um, not necessarily talking about that, but that's misled and misfed too because, um, you know, only the Father knows the day and the hour. The Holy Spirit doesn't know. Jesus doesn't know. Because if Jesus knew, what would he do? He would tell us. Because he said, all things I, the Father has told me, I have told you. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask Pastor Steve to come up to um, kind of play softly in the background. Because we talked about, we, we talked a bit about prayer tonight. We're, we're going to go before the Lord. And as we're um, as we're getting going, are there any are there any any uh, special prayer requests that anybody has? Yes, Jim. Uh, I, I got a friend uh, by the name of Dawn who uh, just diagnosed with stage four cancer. I just want to, I just want to pray for first for salvation for her for her boyfriend Brock. <coughs> You said rock or bra? Rock. rock. And, uh, and for healing. Amen, amen. Any, uh, yes? I have one. Um, just a short little story. Um, my neighbor I haven't seen in a while. She works night shift. And the Holy Spirit told me the car was driving into her driveway last night. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to see her now. And mm -hmm. I went. I was helping her bring things into her house. And she announced to me that she's getting both breasts removed. So I knew that it was a point that I listened to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that I had to do that. And got a little time with her. I actually got to talk to her mom. And her mom is um, raised Roman Catholic. And um, mm -hmm. got to plant a little seed with her. And I just said that um, your daughter's going to be fine. I said she's in the arms of Jesus. And I said that the Lord is her healer and he's taking care of her. So I got the witness to her also, and um, she. Um, I put a little note in her mailbox today, just basically just let her know that I was there for her, my boys, and all of us, and we're praying for her, and we're there for her. So I wanted to reaffirm what I had said last night, just that she had something to hold on to. But her name is Jen. She's actually a nurse, and um, breast cancer and colon cancer run in her family. So October 9th, she's having both breasts removed, and it's at really preventative, but she has the cancer gene that they detected, mm -hmm. and it runs in her family. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Certainly we'll hold her up in prayer. Thank you. <coughs> yes, sir, Mike. Yeah, Rodney, my sister Barbara, who you know from the men's ministry, she's a nun, and uh, she was just diagnosed with breast cancer in both breasts. Mm -hmm. Cancer is just running through the land, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Amen. Beto. Yeah, I was told my sister last night, she just got married, and they found out her husband has stage two cancer. I forget if it was brain cancer or bone cancer or something, but I just want to put him in prayer. I told her I put him in prayer. Okay. Thanks, uh, Walt. 
want? Yes, sir, right here. In the right. Um, I just wanted to, uh, we did an outreach this weekend, Saturday, with um, a couple different ministries down Wildwood. And there's a lot of evil out there. But um, as a whole, we were, able to, we were able to touch people's hearts. And I was just asking for more prayer to, you know, keep God in their life and, and show them the light. And, you know, we planted the seeds. We did our job as a whole. And we just need hope and prayer to lead them where they need to be. There's people struggling all around the evil. And, they don't even see it coming. Wow, wow. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's see hands on. Uh, come right to uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Salvation for our children and grandchildren. Okay. In the back here. Yes, sir. Uh, one of our brothers from uh, our ministry had abruptly left the flock. Uh, I'd like to put out a prayer for him. Let's be the day when the son returns. Uh, his name is Frankie. AKA Meatball. <laughs> you said Frankie, right? Yeah. And then anybody uh, right behind, like right here. My sister, Shari, who is. Sharon, you, you said? Shari. She has Shari. stage four okay. brain cancer. Wow. And she's not a believer. Wow. And she's getting weaker, but she's still. <clears throat> you know, has not expressed any concern about what's going to happen when she dies. Amen, amen. Amen. Good job. Uh, I want to pray for Pastor Gary. Yes. And, uh, and a young man named Zach. Uh, he's, we're praying for survival. Okay. Pamela? Okay, he has a person in here that needs some prayer and hands on. I sitting next to my baby. Yeah. Um, and this is something different than just healing, but we're having some, you know, right here, we're having some people who are stealing our stuff. And, you know, they want me to call, they stole from me at my door, and they want me to call, please, but you know, I want the prayer of salvation for those people. Rather than mm -hmm. calling for me, I want to call my God, please, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or whoever it may be. I do believe it's maybe just one person that sees something at our door and they take it. Yeah, this Amazon stuff and they take it mm -hmm. and close. But whatever they have taken, let their hearts be so, so just unnerved. They're just mm -hmm. everything has to be. And I want that in their spirit mm -hmm. and everything. And that that would bring them to the point of salvation rather than calling mm -hmm. I don't Amen. think that's what I need. Now, I'm going to take requests in a minute, but I'm feeling led to do this. So, bro, would you come on up? And I'd like a couple of men just to come up and lay hands on him. We're going to pray over him. ask you, Lord, that he's got to go in for an important procedure. No, no surgery is minor, but all surgery is major, and, and we could pass on, but I just ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would secure David spiritually, physically, med medically, emotionally, and physically. Lord, that you would guide the eyes and the ears of those doctors, that you would guide their hands, their, their minds, anoint those scalpels, all those, even the support persons who, who have a part in this surgery, that you would just anoint them, that your anointing will fall fresh on them, that, Lord, he is, he's scared. He's coming before you. He's here every week. He's here. He told me he's with the armor, guard for, armor of God for life. And, Lord, we just ask first this, that you would secure his soul. He knows you in the pardoning of his sins but that you would heal his body in the name of Jesus. That you would heal his body in the name of Jesus. We declare healing right now in the name of Jesus. We just ask you that you would move by your almighty power. It is not what man, what the doctors, what men and women say, but it is what thus saith the Lord. 
And, and we know that we have a high priest which cannot be untouched by the infirmities of our feelings, but is tempted at all points like we are yet without sin. And we know he has healing power all in his hands, and that our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, and we just ask you that you would secure David, that you would give him a reprieve from worry. Let his sleep tonight be sweet. Let his sleep from this point going forward to be sweet. Say to the Lord God rebuke you, the blood of Jesus is against you. All this cancer running around, this is not of God. And, and, and God, we just thank you, you are with us. And we just ask you, Lord, that you would guide and, and lead David. Raise him up as a testimony. Heal his body in the name of Jesus. Heal his spirit and soul in the name of Jesus. We know he's worried. But Lord, he need not worry because he can cast all his cares upon you for you care for him. And we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor in advance for what we know you're going to do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. We thank you, Lord. Thank God and amen. 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 Are there others before we... Um, There's a already. I got it. I'm already. And I don't just want to be the only... I'll start us off, but others others feel free to chime in. But I'll, I'll start us off. Lord, we just come before you. You said in your word, and when two or three come together in your name, there you are in the midst of us. And Lord, we have more than two or three here that love you, that trust you, that put their faith in you. You're all we have, Lord. And we just ask you, as cancer runs throughout the land, we just ask you that you would save, that you would heal, that you would deliver in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would remember Dawn, who is in stage four cancer, and who needs to come to a saving knowledge of you. And we just ask you, uh, and for Rick as well, just touch Rick. Let him know who you are and that you even in his state that you guide him each and every day you speak to him. Lord, that you remember Jen with breast and colon cancer, Barbara with cancer, Walter with cancer, and the brothers that go down to Wildwood and they also go in many parts of Philadelphia and even into Camden. Lord, we ask for first for travel and mercy upon them. We ask for your fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit upon them. And, and, and Lord, just use them as vessels. Use them. They are available and willing vessels. We ask that you might use them. And uh, Lord, Rick and Noreen just love you. They love you. They love their children and grandchildren. We ask, Lord, that... Um, and, 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 and you consider them righteous in your son, Jesus Christ. You said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. We just pray that those prayers would reach the children and grandchildren for salvation. God, that you would remember Frankie, that you would remember Sherry, and lest we forget our under-shepherd, Pastor Gary, and we thank you that uh, I had received a report he's now out of the hospital, but Lord, lay your hand on that foot, because you said in your word, beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace, and we ask, Lord, that you would just heal him and, and, and give Thou strength. She pours out so much for the women's ministry, for Alethea, for the church in general. And so much takes place here behind the scenes that we don't even know. But Lord, we just ask you that you would guide and lead, that you would protect and provide. And we ask that you would uh, bring Zach to a surrender. Bring healing and salvation to Sue. And all those, and we know there's others, uh, Elizabeth Howard, our, 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 one of our family members, who we believe is not long for this world, but Lord, secure her soul and touch her body in the name of Jesus. And Lord, touch the family, if you will, in the name of Jesus, and bless them and anoint them, save the unsaved, and bring back the backslidden, we pray in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. If anybody else would like to cry out, please do. Yes. 
concerned, Lord, but I know we don't worry, but we are concerned about her. Because good faith in my profession means doing something that may not be good. So, Lord, I ask that you just stop whatever those feelings are or whatever those things are going on inside of her that is not of you, that you become so real to her that she just knows that your arms are wrapped around her. I ask God for your physical presence. Yes, whether it's through a Jesus. word, Lord, whether it's through somebody there, Lord, whatever it is, or whether she realizes that she may need to take herself to a hospital, whatever it is, God, give to me what I need to do also, Lord, what needs to be said through me. I will do whatever you ask me to do, God, but keep her protected from her, from her own hurt or danger, from anybody else or from to herself. And I'll be careful to give you the honor and the glory of all that is done. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I failed to mention my son, he's a military, he's actually a military career, and he's 32 and a half, he'll be 33 in January, he has a 35 heartbeat. So, um, not that we rely on watches, but he never wore his watch to bed, and actually it showed that it, his Fitbit came up a 35 heart rate. So he's using it as a sign from the Lord that all my boys are believers, that um, it's something that he needed to check out. So he has TRICARE insurance for the government, and they gave him an appointment like an hour away. He can't do that. It's too far away. So he's in the flux of health care, but God is bigger than that health care. So um, his name is Stephen. place you first and that all things be, be done decent and in order and that we thank you Lord in advance for rebuking the devourer for our sakes in the name of Jesus and we just ask that those groups would not only grow but those groups would go outside to the world and, and increase in number through folks and we all know folks who do not know you but Lord we know you have us here for a reason you've placed your Holy Spirit in us for a reason that we might go out and bear witness to you. 
to let people know how good you have been in our lives. We see all around us people, folks at the end of their rope with no hope. But Lord, you are all in all. We thank you. We give you praise. We just ask that you would show up in a mighty way in the in the in the in this in the every person that sits under the sound of my voice. That you will supply their every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. These are your people who love you. If you would even give them some of their wants that are good for them, that do not go against your will. Because we know you're not a stingy God, that you don't withhold anything from us, but you prepare us before you before you, before you uh, send us to our next blessing. We thank you that you prepare us in advance. Because we know right now you're preparing an eternal place for us. And John 14 lets us know that when you come again, you will receive us unto yourselves. We know that heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And this is where our preparation begins. And we just ask that it not just be us, that, that we may grow in number. That we may grow in number. That the devil would experience a deficit. Right now he has a surplus. We pray that he might experience a deficit in the name of Jesus. And God, we just give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And I just pray that every prayer I pray tonight will go up to you as a sweet smelling savor. Lord, we have nothing to give, nothing to offer but our praise. And we, we just give you our praise, we give you our hearts in the name of Jesus.